What's up everybody? I'm Joe B. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to do a basic tutorial on Ableton Live 11. If you're new to Ableton or if you're just getting into music production or recording, even beat making, you've come to the right place. Let's get into it. All right, so when you first open Ableton, it's going to look a little bit different. Don't worry about that. We're going to go over where everything's at. If you're looking to get straight into the beat making process, feel free to skip ahead. But for now, we're going to go over the basic functionality and the layout of Ableton. The first tool I want to tell you guys about is in this bottom left corner, the info view. It's a really useful tool. Anything that you hover your mouse over, that info view is going to give you a basic description of what it is you're looking at and, and kind of how to use it. Also, if you click on the help tab, Ableton actually has built in lessons for you. You've got what's new, a tour, recording audio, a really useful tool. So if you're new to Ableton, give that a look and it'll really help you out. If this is your first setup of Ableton and you're using an audio interface, go to options and preferences. This is where you're going to set your driver and your audio device. This is under the audio tab. So your audio device, that's the interface you're going to be using. And then under input and output, this is where you enable or disable all of your channels on the interface. If you don't have these enabled and you open a new track, you're not actually going to see those inputs here. So keep that in mind. Left side of the screen, now this is where you're going to drag in all your sounds, your drums. You've got audio effects, instruments, a lot of useful tools here. Audio effects is going to be for, you know, your compressors, your EQs, noise gates, anything like that. Uh, you've got a plugins tab, clips, samples. So this is where you're going to be dragging everything into your workspace. You've also got the favorites tab. So if I was to find a sound that I really liked and I just right click it, I can pick a color and then it'll be added to your favorites. Really useful. So down here in the bottom, this is where you create your effect chains. So if you add a new track, it's gonna come in blank. Now, if you wanna add, say a compressor or an EQ, you just come to your audio effects and if you, there's a couple ways you can do this. If you have this track highlighted, you can just double click or you can drag it in or you can actually just drag this to an open, the open space and it'll automatically open a new track with that function in there. So again, each one of these are tracks. Now you have audio, MIDI and return tracks. All of these over here are your return tracks. This is your master track. If you're going to be plugging in a mic or a guitar, you're going to use an audio track. If you're using a MIDI controller, you're going to use a MIDI track. Now, the cool thing about Ableton is that in this view, that now this view is what we call the session view, is kind of what sets Ableton apart. This, If you click these three lines over here, that'll take you to your arrangement view. This is what most people are used to seeing in a DAW. You lay your track out left to right. In each one of these slots, now this is where you can record your loops and you can do this live. This, what's, this is why DJs really love this software because there's, it's really set up for you to create music in a live environment. Also, within each track, you've got where you're pulling the audio from in an audio track. External in, that's basically just saying that I'm pulling audio from my interface. Then I have all of the channels on the interface. You've got the monitor function, audio 2. It just means we're sending audio from this track to the master track. This monitor function, now if it's set to auto, you'll only hear audio coming through that track if the track is armed. Now that's this button down here. Arming the track is what you're going to do when you're ready to record from that track. So if I want to record something in this slot here, the track needs to be armed. If this monitor section is set to in, you don't have to have this tracked arm to hear what's coming through, but you still won't be able to record unless it's armed. And off, of course, just means that you're not going to hear what's coming through that track. Down here, you have your sends function. The sends are pretty easy because they just go by the alphabet. So if you insert a new return track, now I'm going to get F. I've got A through F. So A correlates to A, B to B. You get the point. So if I crank this up, now I'm sending this track. I'm sending this signal to the send track. And it's going to mix both of those and send it to the master. So if I crank this up, you're going to hear the reverb. Yo. And then B is delay. Hello. 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 
by default, Ableton gives you reverb and delay, and then you can add many more return tracks with different effects. Then down here, of course, you've got your fader, and then you have your panning function if you want to go left to right. You also have this track activator button. All that's going to do is if I click that, then you won't hear anything coming through that track, whether it's armed or not. If you turn that off, you're just not going to hear anything coming through it. Then you've got a solo button, so if you've got multiple tracks going at once and you click this, you're only going to hear what's coming through this channel. When you switch over to the arrangement view, everything that's in these channels is exactly the same over here. It's just laid out a little bit different. You've got your arm button, solo, the track activator button. This is your pan. This is essentially like your fader where you can kind of find. On this one, you can kind of fine tune it by the number. Um, this is like your DB, your track volume. And then you've got all of your send tracks. I mentioned this before, but really quick. So down here on the bottom, these are effect chains. So when you're sending a signal through one of these channels, whatever you drag into these channels is going left to right. So it does matter where you put stuff in. So if I wanted this to come first, I'll drag it to the left. Your signal's going left to right. Keep that in mind. So up top here, you've got your play button, stop, record. You got some other functions over here. Uh, this button here is if you want to record in the session view and you want to record in these slots. Now, this record button is actually if you're wanting to record in the arrangement view. Over here, you have your beats per minute. You've got your timing. You've got your metronome. So with that metronome, if you click this little arrow right here, this is going to give you a count in. So if I'm going to record and I want a, a one, two, three, four before I start recording, this is where you set that. And then if you have multiple clips across different tracks already recorded and one's playing and you want another one to play, this function right here is what determines when that track's going to start. Don't get confused on that. We're about to jump into a little beat making process and you'll see how all this works. So let's go ahead and jump into making a little beat. If you haven't noticed already, this track is where my mic's coming from. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a new MIDI track here. And we're just going to drag in a drum, a drum kit. We'll just go with the 8, 808 kit. Keep it pretty easy. Now, I've already got my MIDI controller connected. Qu another quick tip for you, go to Options and Preferences again. If you have a MIDI controller and you want to link that to Ableton where you don't have to use your mouse for the functionality of the MIDI controller, you come in here and click what your MIDI controller is, and that will allow you to use your MIDI controller to control the DAW. So we have a drum kit pulled up under my MIDI controller. Now I'm going to turn this down a little bit just for the video purposes. And you can hear I've got different sounds within this kit. The first thing when I'm making a beat is I want to set the metronome. So right now we've got 90 B BPM, which, which will work for like a standard hip hop beat. Typically hip hop, from my experience, about 70 to 110. I mean, you can go outside of those ranges, but that's generally where I'm at for a hip hop beat. So you hear your click track. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right? So that up click is when the bar starts. Now, before when I mentioned that this count in function, if this is set to none and I click record here, it's going to start recording immediately. But we want all of our stuff to be in time. So the easiest way to do that is set this to one bar. Now, if I click record, if it's after that upbeat on the metronome, it's not going to record until the next upbeat. So if I'm sitting here playing a beat, right? And I click record, it's not going to record until the next upbeat. There you go, you've got a live loop. Now, again, if I just duplicate this, so let's take the snare out of this one and take the kick out of this one. So with this function right here, how it's set to one bar, that means if this one's already playing, 
when I click this, it's not going to come in to the next bar. That way it's already in time. Now, if I set this to none, and I just play this beat, as soon as I click this play button, it's going to play immediately. It's going to play as soon as I click that button. So that means the two aren't going to sync up. They're not going to be in time. Generally, I like to separate my drums. So if we duplicate this, we can get rid of this clip. I can arm this track. And now I have the same sounds on it. So after I get something recorded, I generally turn the metronome off. That is completely up to you. It may be different if I'm recording a guitar or something. Now there's a couple ways you can put the music in here. So I can click my record button. Right now I'm playing. And if I click my record button, I can tap on my MIDI controller and it'll just record the way I'm playing it. Right? Now, if my timing's off, there's a couple things I could do. So if you double click on this, you're gonna get this view here and that's all of your MIDI notes, the notes I just played. I can right click these and I can do quantize which will set them in time according to quantize settings. You have quantize two, you can do your nearest quarter, your nearest eighth, so on and so forth. Or you can manually drag these notes where you want. Alternatively, if you right click in this area and you see this draw mode, you can actually draw notes in, which is really cool. You can also turn that on by this button up here in the upper right. So if I turn, if I click this little head headphone icon, I will hear these sounds as I draw them in or click these buttons here. So right here I have my hi hats. So if I went to draw mode, I could just essentially draw these notes in. This this view here is really useful because there's ways you can get really efficient with making your beats. So if I just drag this down. And I've already got these four notes the way I want timed. I can highlight this, Control D, and that'll duplicate it. Alternatively, you can right click up here and duplicate loop. I can do the same thing for my snare and my kick. So these numbers up here are your timing. And each one of these, when you go from one to two, this is the first bar, second bar, third bar. So say I want to do something different on say every four bars. Well, I can just draw these notes in the way I'd like. So let's say I wanted to put a roll on the snare at the on the fourth bar. The easy way to do this is drag this over. Now I'm only looping this last bar just to make it easier. That way I don't have to listen through the whole thing every time. Now I can draw in my notes accordingly. And there you have it. Really quick, I wanted to tell you guys about this too. So down here, you've got your velocity. Now, if your MIDI controller is touch sensitive, then how hard you hit the button is going to determine where the velocity is at. You can also manually change this. I could act as if I'm playing it soft and then getting louder. If you don't want your beat as dry and you want that human feel, people call it, you can always come in here and change the velocities of just each individual one because, you know, no drummer is going to, you can't hit the note exactly the same way every time. Another quick tip on your tracks, if you come up here and right click, you can change the colors of these, even your clips. Just to differentiate your different instruments, you know, if you're, if you're using drums and you want to separate your hi-hats and snare crashes, whatever the case may be, you can come up here and, and color coordinate. doesn't seem like much, but after you get about 20 or 30 tracks in here and you start to come over here to record in your arrangement view, it's going to make it a lot easier knowing what's what. I'll give you another quick tip. Let's duplicate this clip right here. Now, this is a really cool function here. Again, if you double-click this and you pull up this view here where you see your MIDI notes, You've got a couple different functions over here in the left. Right now it's set to loop. That means this one bar loop is going to constantly repeat itself as I play it. 
at the end of this, it's just going to keep on going. If I turn this off, it's going to play one time and stop. If you have, say, a scratch, like a, like a DJ kind of scratch or something, you just want to play one time, it's really useful. Now, if you notice this tab right here, this play button, so you also have follow action. So if you want to stack up your clips and you want one to play after another, you can turn this follow action on. For this one, we're going to set the follow action to on, and then it's going to be set to next. That means when I play this, now it's playing this clip after it. It's really cool because after you stack your all of your clips, you can essentially create a chorus on one line and then say you want to go to a breakdown or a verse and you set these to where they'll play automatically, you can just click play and it'll play your track the way you want. Alternatively, you can go over here to the master and if I click play here, it's going to play everything within this line. And then if I want to go to the next, I can just click play. And it's not going to come in until the next bar because we have this function here set to one bar. So I'll turn this function, this follow action function off. So now when I click play on the master track, it's going to play everything in this top line. When I click this on the next bar, it's going to go to whatever's on this line. Pretty cool. And you can also do this with your MIDI controllers. Um, so I have a, uh, launch, a launch pad mini circuit, which has the functionality of these play buttons on it already. So if I just click play here, I don't even have to use the mouse. Also, I have what's called a launch key mini. I can launch each one of these tracks individually. So I can start this one, click this button, and it's not going to come in until the next bar again. Same thing with the hi-hats or the next track. So let's go ahead and get another sound or two in here, and then I'll show you guys how to kind of record it in the session view. So I'm just going to drag a piano or something in really quick. Add some bass. Again, this is really like just the basic functionality, so I'm not going too in depth. Um, you can always change your sounds. Um, you can go through and pick which snare you want, pick which hi-hat, you know, pick your different sounds, set it up the way you want. So now that we got a little basic beat going, we're going to go over here to the session view. And now that I have all these in this top row, a really cool thing we can do here is since they're all already playing, ready to go, I can just come over here and click record. It's going to have one bar count in. It's going to go ahead and record all that, even my voice right now, because my voice is armed. Now, you're going to notice it's all grayed out. That's because all of these are set, ready to play. So there's a couple things I could do. I could hit the stop button on the master track, or I could come over here and click this play button. Now, that's going to turn everything off over here in this view, but in this view, it's going to make everything live. So now I can go back and click play. And I've got a recorded track. And in this view, you have a lot more functionality as far as arranging your, it's, it's the arrangement view. So this is where you can arrange your beat or your music. So I could essentially say I wanted to start this without the bass and hi-hat. I could really simply just come over here, drag these where I want, or you could click in here and you can split them
And there you go. You've got a basic beat laid out, ready to go. So that kind of covers the basic functionality of how to use your session view and just adding in clips and live loops. And then after you set it up in this view and you go over to the arrangement view, it's so simple to just lay it out the way you want. So that's just kind of the basics and how to get started with Ableton. And there you have it. So that's a basic beat. That's kind of the, just the basic functionality of Ableton. I hope this has helped you. I know I didn't go too in depth on a lot of things. There's so much more you can do with this software. Um, but after you get those basic functions down of how to just start a beat or start a song, start recording, and then you get used to just how to loop, how to record, you can really crank out some music, some quality music in no time with this software. So I hope this has helped you guys. You guys take care. Stay positive. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.